Football was your it first was love. All I cared about, like your I'm dad, Man about United. He's Arsenal. Ross. Yeah, yeah. So, so what did he drop you on your head as a baby? No, no, no. What happened was, <laughs> what, what happened, happened was, there, I, I could see, I could see the future. <laughs> What's going on, people? Troops TV, back again. Back our blood clock again. You understand? <laughs> oh, you hear the laugh, blood? Come you get on. me? We, we got another general. In the building, blood, you understand? Back again talks, episode four. Back again with troops, episode 200 and I'm gonna say 42? I think it's 42. Yeah, that's numbers. I think, yeah, we've been going strong, blood, you understand? But new segment to the um, back again um, productions. Obviously back, end, back again talks, episode four. First opposition fan that I've had on. Because come on, and I'm repping. He come in full attire, blood, you get me? Like, I don't think he got the memo. No, I you didn't. understand? I had three gunners, I got the hat trick. I tried to go for the arshaving, but it wasn't possible. I had to I had to go and get Van Nistelrooy and their man there. Jeez. You get me? But Jeez. he's a legend in the game, blood, you understand? He done, he, he's done absolute wonderful things, continues to do wonderful things. It's only right that he comes on and gets his flowers, blood, you get me, pause. My brother, <laughs> yeah, because over yes or the pause is them it's fly. It's crazy over yes, there. Over yes or them pauses. fly. But over you get me, big up my brother, none other than Harry Panero, blood, yes, you get my me. Brother What's going on, Broski? Happy to have you on the show. They are, man, they are. We done an exchange today. Yeah, pause. You get me, yeah, crazy. There's yeah, another there's one. There's gonna be, all right, yeah, see DJ today? Khaled, I should have pulled all him up. There's gonna be hella pauses. <laughs> yeah, no, he was on uh, my show today, Inside Scoop. Um, so it's only right, you get me. I didn't even know that I could, um, you know, get you on my podcast today, but that's just what real niggas do, man. You get me, so I appreciate that, man. Nah, I you appreciate um, you inviting man on the show. You get yeah. me. It's, it's been a long time coming, pause. You get me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, blood. It's, it's yeah, it's, it's mad over yes or Yeah, just because, you get me. Yeah. But I want to go back to the start of things. Yeah. Like where it all begun. Mm. So you are originally from South, I like. Yeah, yeah. Family from, Sierra Leone. Yeah, I'm from Sierra Leone. So was you born dad, in Sierra Leone? No, no, no. So I was born at uh, King's College Hospital, Camberwell. Um, so all my life I've lived in South London. So from the age of when I was born to when I was five, I lived in um, North Peckham. Um, then I moved to South Bermondsey from when I was like five to 16. 16, 17 and 17, I moved back to Peckham Rye. And then I've just lived there up until, you get me, mum became HP, really and truly. Siblings? Yeah, one sister. So, funny enough, my sister's actually my PA now, isn't it? Oh, um, sick. Yeah, yeah, we keep, we keep it in the family. Yes, I love that. Do you get it? Um, and she's just someone that's just like, you get me, you know, like when your, old, your younger siblings come like your older sister, that's what she's like. So I was going to say, when you said sister, I could hear the protection in your yeah, voice. Yeah, no, that's like my everything, yeah. you get me? Um, but yeah, no, raised in Peckham. Um, and Bermondsey, I will never forget Bermondsey because that's it's it's mad though. Okay, it's kind of it's close. It's like a literally five minute walk, and you're in Peckham. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So for man, um, man's upbringing was just as you know anyway. It's the ghetto, blood. Like really, it is the ghetto, innit? And I think for man, my parents were very protective over that because they was aware. I remember my mum saying to me she used to get in the lifts and that when we used to live in North Peckham, and like someone would would walk in there and your bag's getting teethed. It was that, and then uncles used to have to like come into the lift, and they used to say, "Listen, never go in that lift on your own, innit? it." So that was the that's the environment that it was back in the day. And then um, as I got older, I started to see things differently. As a kid, you don't you're not aware of all of these things, innit? it? And I start to, you know, you see like younger kids that are basically older already because of they ain't got no dads or they ain't got no mums or their houses are not stable as mine was. And obviously, being a Muslim. That was the main thing that was going through my crib. Was so you was a born Muslim. Born Muslim. You, were, you never yeah. converted. No, no. I think because Sierra yeah. Leone is a big Muslim population. Yes, yeah, massive. It's my like boy's eight, from Sierra Leone, but he's on the Christian side. Yeah, but there is a big yeah. 80, 90 percent of mm -hmm. them are, are are Muslims, isn't it? So for me, my upbringing was very much like quite sheltered. But as you already know, the environments can change how things are at home, minute. And I felt like up until I was about, I'd say up until I was about eleven, I was literally a good youth that just kicked the ball. But then it's like when you get exposed and you can stay out a bit longer, you start to see things differently. You start to see who is getting the respect or who's cool and how you need to move and certain What type things. of person? What type are. of person? And you, you, I feel like up until you're about 10, you don't know who you are. Mm. And even after that, you don't. You're just figuring yourself out and you try and become someone who your environment is basically forming. You get me? So I feel like from, yeah, when I got into secondary school, I think that's when things changed for me. I went to Archbishop Michael Ramsey. It's no longer that school no more, which was bang in the middle of, Peckham, uh, Campbellwell, Mitesville Estate, and Brixton. So it's like 
literally Brixton's up the road. Mike's State obviously is still Brixton, but deep Brixton was down the road and stuff. And I'm obviously from Peckham. So just by association, things start to get, Techie. you start to look at things differently and you start to formulate a team of people that are going home that way. Whereas some people are walking home that way. So I feel like when I got to school, it started getting real, you start to formulate a, a character. And I think my character was, I was very much, a, I've always been an entertainer from early, from primary school, secondary school. I've always wanted to entertain, but you got to remember that the environment that man's part of isn't, isn't funny. Mm -hmm. So you got- It's real. It's real, isn't it? Like things are happening. I think, I think more things happened in my school life than it happened when I got older. Because it was just, man was grown, grown kids acting like men. Do you know what I'm saying? Doing certain things. And I feel like that's what, I guess, changed and shaped the person that I am today, innit? Like I've seen so much things at an early age that no one should be seeing at mm -hmm. that age. And then dealing with certain things that men should never be doing. If my mum and dad knew, well, they ended up finding out anyway, but if my mum and dad knew half of the stuff I was keeping up with, they probably would have put me on a plane to Sierra Leone. Business class, because I'm not coming back home. Do you get me? <laughs> It would, it would have been that, innit? But I think, yeah, being from Peckham definitely shaped me because there's a lot of, you know, you hear the stories, you can't go to this place and it really was that. It was it was a small community, but there was a lot of beauty in that community. As you can see, like, as we got older, you see how much people have come through the ends mm -hmm. and from gigs, Dampson, you know what I'm saying? Flipping John Boyega, myself, you got Tom Mooch. There's so many great people that's come from there, but there's a lot of struggle that's come through that. And I feel like I was a definitely like a a, a factor of that growing up, you get me? So you said, you touched on it when we was making our way here. You mm. went to school with Boos. Yeah. Did you go primary with him as well? Nah, so- Secondary. I, I went secondary. What was primary like? So primary, I went to, like I said, I, I lived in Peckham first for five years. So I went to Gloucester. And all I remember- Was though, that close to your house? Mad close, like North Peckham. It was if you a lived walk. in North Peckham, it's a, it's a walk, yeah. not a bus, nothing. It's a, yeah. it's a walk, innit? I remember being five and they had to take off my Caterpillar Timberlands because they weren't Timberlands, they were Caterpillars, yeah? Because I kept kicking kids. Like, I, I don't know what it was about. Still told. Still told in that's your ankle. That's a real South Bermondsey, a Millwall, yeah, yeah, man. Let's you have should, it. Let's, let's have it. 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 So I remember just always being like, getting told off for, for, for school. So I don't really remember it that much. So he was kicking is... balling caterpillars. But I just knew, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, man, yeah, come man, on. That's why the touch is elite. That's why the touch is elite. Oh, you get me? I could do it any, any, any way in it. And I remember when I moved to, to South Bermondsey, that was a difference because it was multicultural. Yeah. Whereas in Peckham- Yeah, because it's more of a geezerish around there, isn't it? Yeah, there's geezers, there's a few black people, but predominantly there was more like white people in my school, innit? And I remember like moving to that school and just thinking, right, this is different. It's more karma. And I had, my school was, was cold. We had a swimming pool next to man's Raw. part of man's school. So schools would come to my primary school to swim. Yeah. But that was part of mine. And then like trips would go to like when it was before the O2, it was the Millennium Dome. Man, yes. would go, man would go to those places, British Transport Museum. So I had a very good primary school in terms of my upbringing. But again, being being a, um, someone that just loves badness, I just love to just, just muck around. Yeah, was you good or like was you I like a- nah, No chance I was a good kid in school, no way. Like. You gotta understand, yeah. I've always felt like I can only focus on things that are genuinely I have a a, a, a love of desire for. So if it comes to football and PE, I'm the best student. I was gonna say in school was that drama and football. So drama later on in my in my school year, so like secondary school. So it was football was your it first was football, love. All I cared about, like your I'm dad, Man United. He's Arsenal. Ross. Yeah, yeah. So, so what did he drop you on your head as a baby? No, no, no. What happened was, <laughs> what, what happened, happened was, there, I, I could see, I could see the future, and I could see it was yeah, only fuck pain. Are you? It was pain and them thing there. Up, yeah. You see, so it get me. It's just hella, up, hella pain going on over there. So I said, you know, I remember Andy Cole and Dwight York, two black men. I said, them. The, you know, see Uncle Righty is a sad man no, as but well. Righty was. I see Righty. Right yeah. Righty stopped. Remember, 98, 99. Mm. Righty moved to West Ham. So when did you get into football? So I, I loved playing football because from like early, how you yeah. just touched on that. Yeah, you must have got into football what ninety seven. So, so, so yeah, ninety seven is when I really started understanding football. Yeah. That's when we signed um, Cole. Sheringham. Yeah, Sheringham Cole. Yeah, from Newcastle. And I remember that kit. I, my dad got it from a charity shop. It was a black kit with the um, Gold, sharp, yes. sharp. That's when Cantona it, uh, did the yes, flag yes, thing. Yes, flag kicking Palace. I yeah. know all of them thing there. You get me? So that's when I started I started saying, yeah, United's my team. Like, okay. I can see my people. Right, he was always a legend. Yeah. And and obviously, but I, he he. But left. you could relate to United. Yeah, Anelka, it was, it was going to be, a, like, Anelka was my guy. Yeah. So I, I liked Anelka. I was like, oh, Anelka, you know, the little airing, the little chain. Was, I said, it yeah. It was wavy Bad with man. It. You get me? But yeah, I went for United. But then also, obviously my uncles was looking after me when my dad and I used to go to work. Okay. So I would stay with them in the weekends and so and stuff and they were they were big united fans they bought me my first 
home and away jersey in the 98, 99 season. So I was already repping. So I remember the Champions League final, my dad said to me, if you lose this game, you, support you have to support Arsenal. So I'm crying. Yeah, because it was 89 minutes. Because getting back yeah, to yeah, yeah, The game should have been about 5-0. Yeah, facts, blood. So I'm like, oh, this is a myth. So I've gone to bed now. And then my dad's gone, fuck. So I've gone, what? Ran one, upstairs one. now, 1-1. One, one. So I'm looking through the, like, I'm, I'm supposed to be in bed right now. So you're looking, looking through the doorway. And, he, and then the second goal's gone and I've gone, yes. And he's gone, go to bed, go to bed. <laughs> he's and I just know, remember them times there, like there's no social media. So I yeah. can't wait to go to school on a Monday and be like, we are champions, bro. And we've already done the Premier League. We've already done the FA Cup. So that was my introduction into football, innit? But again, when I was a kid, bro, I just loved like doing things I wanted to do. So like science, I couldn't tell you nothing about those things there. But when it comes to like cracking jokes, I just loved the excitement I got when I made people laugh. I think I've always kind of been that person that like I just, enjoyment is my thing. I love to just be that person that can create humor for people. Cause mm -hmm. life is life is hard, bro. Yeah, and we man. gotta make it what we can. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing I've always had, if I didn't have money, if I didn't have clothes, if I didn't have anything, I had my jokes. And that is something that I think drew a lot of people towards me. I think I was very popular in that sense where, you know, I ain't gonna do nothing mad, but I'm always gonna make everyone laugh. So that was that was like my upbringing. And even in even when I was like in Peckham and we was doing what we was doing, yeah. The man would always laugh. I'd always be the one to make everyone laugh. Even though a man's on some serious shit. You need a man like that in the yeah, game. Yeah, bro, that was man. I, I was, no one can ever say, and you I, you got people that can attest to that. Yeah. No one can ever say I've ever changed. I've always been this way. Boost will tell you himself, like, I'm a man that in, in lessons and stuff, I'll just scream. And then the teachers will turn around, who's that? And I'm just like- Yeah, you got your head down. I've just got my head down, I'll just scream. Yeah. yeah, pause. And then like, for example, in, in, in exams and that, yeah, you know, like when your phone's vibrating back in the day and the Nokia will be like, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I used to do that. <laughs> like I've, I've, I've always been just different. Yeah. Like I've always felt like I was different. And even when I was younger, like I would watch like um, my wife and kids and stuff, yeah. And like Martin and, and them shows there. Yeah. And just want to be like Jamie Foxx. I yeah. wanted to be like Damon Wayans because I just felt like they were themselves. And I've always tried to just be that. I've never tried to be someone that I wasn't. And even when I tell people my upbringing and where I'm from, and they're, they're surprised, but it just put they put two and two together. The people that I'm affiliated with, the, the the friends that I keep, the places that I go, who you see, like these are my brothers who I've been raised with as well. I just always knew what I wanted to do in life, which wasn't to just continually stay in the streets or do what, what, what man was doing. And I try not to glorify it, but it's part of man's story. It's part of where man's from. It's why man moves a certain way. And, and, and I view life that way because you know that's what made man who man is. And obviously it's not to say just because of your environment, you got to change. Cause there's people that I know that didn't go the route that we went, you know? They were also sheltered, but they realized this ain't it. But I just wasn't someone that, I didn't want to be someone that you could violate. Didn't want to, that's not my, my portion. So I had to be a certain way. And it, got, and it became a character, it became who man was, part of man's DNA. And there's always someone better than you, of course, but I, I was just someone, I just didn't have it. I just didn't, I didn't want that to be man's thing. Cause if man's gonna do this, man's got to do it properly. Mm. And that was, that was, that was it until man got to a certain age and then you just got to make different life decisions. You get me? And I got enough brethren who are in, in jail now who made their decisions and they got to live with that. Then you got people that are not here no more because that's just part of how it is. And I think seeing that from a young age, I felt like it, it puts you on guard and you, you just, move a different way. Man's got trauma from things that- PTSD is real, bro. That we haven't even dealt with to this day, bro. Yeah, my girl says to me, I need to talk to someone. I think, I always say to her, it's not masculine, da, da, da. No, but it, like, that's, that's your issue. That's your thing, too, yeah, yeah. You're too, you need to open yourself up, bro, pause. I'm on, like, man. yo, man, I'm mad at the end of the yeah, day. I, I don't the know thing, them thing there. You, you got to look at it like, man's parents, you think mental health was even a thing Exactly. Back then. A man has been, come from a war-torn country, hasn't spoken about it, just cracking on with life. But really, you need to talk to someone and offload what it is because your parents don't even know how to deal with it. And I think for us, my family, the only thing they had was God really, which was like, you know, stay prayed up. And the way, the way of Islam is very peaceful. So I feel like my dad would always try and revert to Islam to try and get me to- Did he have you reading the Quran from young? Yeah, I read, like I knew, I knew, like I know a few surahs and stuff, but I, I didn't really read the Quran until I got a bit older. Um, I think that was me just trying not to go Cause I knew if I went that way, mm -hmm. man's not, I'm changing. Mm -hmm. and I kind of didn't want to change. I felt like I loved what I was yeah, doing. I loved the being life. yourself. Yeah, I just loved being in and around my mm -hmm. brethren at the time. And that was just our, 
our thing in it. You know what I'm trying to say? It was like a, it was like a family. We was a family. You'd see this man, you'd see that man. We'd move together as a group, a unit, a family together in it. And to this day, it's kind of like that. Some men are, are not around us no more. Some around are, but you still see the same faces that were there way before the throwbacks. Do you know what I'm saying? So your parents, did they tell you a lot about Sierra Leone when you was young? Did you visit when you was young? Yeah, I went when I was 14 in year eight. Okay. I remember telling my bridges I'm going to go and they was like, no, nah, it's been love though, bro. It's been <laughs> yeah. love. Because you're like, Cause, yo. Because I'm like, I'm not the, 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 the most, you know, best kid. Yeah. But I thought, yeah, to get me. But I went back there and it felt was like it, home. Uh, was it an eye opener? Of course it was. To it, see it, like- it got, I got to see how blessed first, and privileged. Yeah. And did you still think it was bad? There. Yeah, of course. Like, I remember having, I had a mad Or did you go that. there and be like, think, yo, I'm about to have to raise my game. No, you know, no, he's about to have a bit better, like. Sierra Leone, yeah. <laughs> when I went to Jamaica, it was kind of like, all Sierra right, Leone's cool. different to like Jamaica, maybe like Nigeria. There's ab absolute bad man over there. Not to say Sierra Leone don't have that, yeah. But it's a bit more different. And when I went, it was a bit more different. Okay. You know what I'm trying to say? I feel like there was deaf old people. I wasn't around that, so mm -hmm. I didn't see it. Yeah, because you said your family was godly. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're Muslim, like heavy. Mm -hmm. That's a massive part of man's culture. Exactly. It's very heavy over there. But when I went, I saw like little things like where man shower and stuff, like it's completely different. Mm -hmm. You know, man's just got running water yep. and you're in your toilet and everything else. Man's pooing in a hole. Cause, Literally. Do you know what I'm trying a to ditch. say? Like, and that hole ain't getting cleaned. Nope. It's there. Mm -hmm. So you're going there and it smells like last Flies. week shit. You know what I'm trying to say? So I saw stuff like that, but then there was also the beauty, beautiful side to it. Now I'm used to seeing on TV flies on people's faces. And I don't know, I haven't seen Sierra Leone. My mom's telling me that the 80s in Sierra Leone, beautiful. We had this, we had that, the, the you know, the- Cause did, don't they have- um, Diamonds. Yes. But the war, we had a war though. So I went after the war. Okay. Yeah. So my granddad passed away from a bombing in the war. Yeah. My, my mom's, my mom's here. Yeah, RIP. I didn't get to meet him either. My mom's dad Same passed away. Same as me. Away, my, yeah. my granddad died 84. See, I, I, I ain't seen none of my granddads. I ain't seen Luckily, yeah, I, I got to see granddad. two of my grandmas. Yes, so. I had my, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Trust me. Like, yeah, same I got thing. to see two of my grandmas. But I remember when I went, yeah, the war was real. So like I said, before the war happened, yeah, or before I went to Sierra Leone, sorry, my um, granddad passed away from being bombed in his house. Jesus Christ. And that was when the, the rebels, that's what they would call them, they were called rebels. They took over Sierra Leone and they were just chopping people's hands and so on. It was a horrible, horrible time for Sierra Leone in that country. So I remember like um, when I got, the, when my mum got the call that her dad had passed and I was going to school and she couldn't take me to school. She was in hysterics. Yeah, and I think I had to walk to school by myself and stuff. Um, so that changed the way Sierra Leone looked. You know, we still haven't recovered from that war because we haven't had the right aid or the, you know, the, the, the country's, um, you know, finances, I guess, isn't as powerful as most countries or, you know, usually like, for example, if a country happens, they'll get aid and through time- It will get better. It will get better, but I don't think it's got better. And no. it's still there's certain reminiscences of the, of the war in it. So when I went there, I saw exactly that, you know what I'm trying to say, but I still saw happiness though like genuine happiness without nothing or even with the littlest things. So it made me, it made me much more humble and it made me love my country even more. And um, I feel like I'm one of the few people that's doing something, whether it's as an athlete or, you know, content creator or anything or musician even that's from Sierra Leone. We've got a few, we've got like Big Zoo, Idris Elba, Tony Rudiger, you know what I'm saying? But there's a few of us, whereas with Nigerians and Jamaicans and Caribbeans in general, Ghanaians, there's a lot of them. Mm. So I felt like, as now any point on, on reflection here, yeah, that like, you get me, that's my thing now. I'm always gonna say and, mm -hmm. and be, be loud about where I'm from because it's a beautiful country, bro. It's just that it hasn't had the same, I guess, love or support as most other countries have had in it. But yeah, when I went there, I was just like, wow, this is different. Do you know what I'm saying? The food's more sweeter. It's coming from Fresh the up. essence. I'm seeing uh, the Fanta Sprite Coke bottles like, it's you tasting said it's, different. You said it was orange. It's like, orange. We were talking, about, in the, we were yeah. talking about America. This one here is light skin orange. Yeah, yeah. It's like pale yeah. orange. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Whereas, whereas my, it's real life orange. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? I said so, you got the J. Cole. Come on, there you go. There you go. So I'm just like, yeah, that's my, that was like, when I saw all of that stuff, I was there for four weeks as well. Oh, wicked. So and you got was, to spend a good time. Was, I was there, like I, I, my, my, I speak my, my language fluently, but I think oh, wicked. That, that trip. So my bread, I don't think my brethren can. Yeah. I don't, because my brethren got sent over there as a bad you. Yeah. I think it may be 04. Yeah. I'm not sure if both of them could speak. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure. I'm sure they can understand it. Yeah. But, but, I but speaking it, but I, my, my parents, and like I said, my uncles that was raising me when I was younger, they definitely spoke to you in. Spoke to me in Creole. 
Yeah, and I made sure that I would learn. Even as a kid, bro, I was I was mimicking what my mum and dad would say. So I've I've always been fluent. But when I went there, I was having full on conversations. Like something happened to me once, and I was explaining how someone done me wrong to my auntie, and I was speaking to her in full Creole. She's like, "Wow, like you can actually speak the language." Like, and I was like, "Yeah, well, I'm here in it." Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I could have been there for two months. I'll be real with you, three months even, because life was good. Do you know what I'm saying? But um, luckily for me, I got to see my grand my grandmas. And um, God rest their souls, but they were incredible, like women. You could see the way they, people spoke about them. And it trickles down to how my mum and my dad are. You get me? They, they get spoken about very highly, very selfless people as well. And it carries on to the way I am as a person. I love to see people happy more than myself, but that's come from obviously my religion, but also how my parents raised me as well. You get me? Secondary school. Psh. It's a, is, is this when it started to... That's when it started getting dark, man. Yeah, it started to... That's when it started this, getting dark. when you realise that, yo, there is another... There's you know another world. So mad? Yeah, Cause seven. Because the streets is literally another world. The streets compared is another to, world. Compared to, like, the yeah, normal seven, world. good you. Yeah, eight, good you. Yeah, nine, that's when I turn up. And, and that's, like, when the important years kick in. Because yeah, you're sats are in year sats, nine. Bunda sats, rude boy. I, I turned into, like, it was just... It was gang. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Man, love to fight. Whatever them man... Whatever my man I'm on, that's what I'm on. Do you get me? I was more like a soldier more than a leader, if I'm being honest, didn't it? I felt like the, the the thing with me is that I've always just felt like my brethren are my everything, can it? Like the, those are my people and I do I do right by them. And I think being from Peckham and then going to a school that's in Brixton, automatically man just don't like Brixton use, mm. isn't it? Don't know why, but automatically that's what it was. So after school, when we see them, it's either like, well, we're getting them done. And to be honest, if I'm honest, like we usually had the upper hand, but because they're their school is, um, their area is right. They right can just, by, they can they just, can just call the troops. Yeah, and but, everybody and their mother. But pull it's up. heart though. You gotta have heart. See, yeah. when you're in this, it's not some. For you to go to school, like say, for because at the time that was your up block, as yeah, we say yeah, it. So yeah. for you to go to school on your up block, yeah, you're already showing a lot of bravery and yeah, courage. Yeah, come on, after and school. Madness. Yeah, oh, oh, bro, after school, man's all going to Brixton as well. Like oh, oh, on a Saturday, getting on a bus free to to literally land right in on Brixton Road or wherever it is and just trying to find whoever. And that for me is that is it's like, that was part of what we had seen before us. So man's just doing what has been done before. It's just, it literally trickles down. You see it now to this mm -hmm. day. That's why with man, I never get onto youth stuff because it's part of growth if you're from a certain place mm -hmm. and you and you walk a, diff, a, a certain road in it, uh, a certain walk of life. So for me, I felt like that was just man's, man's thing. Like, but there's like man will know that there's there's uh youths outside of school lesson five man's not even focused on the lesson i'm focused on what we're doing when we get outside and sc the, the the school picked up off on, on it police picked up on it so it was a thing where they knew exactly what it was so growing up i just felt like yeah bro i just started building this energy towards man where i just felt like man was untouchable that's how we felt and it's peckham's are such a small place for us to have such a noise across london bro yeah because even in northwest we were hearing about peckham yeah. PYG. Like yeah. Whenever we went to Chocadero, man would be like, yo, there's some Nam Utes. There's 30, thing. 40 of us. We pull up to Chocadero, there'll be like 30 Nam Utes outside the thing. We'll pull up with like 15 man, but we never actually got into drama with you lot. Yeah. Like you was probably there, blood. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. No, but the, the but thing there was, was always man, like a big number of like either Bricky mm. or Nam. Yeah. We had we had numbers, but we had a heart in the numbers though. There will be five men and the five men have got heart. Mm -hmm. There's no running. That's yeah, what, no one's. That's, 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 that was man's stupidity. Don't run. Yeah. Don't run. And then it's like, when you, you hear that, you don't run. Yeah, you don't run. And it's like, when you think about it, it's mad stupid because mm -hmm. it's like, run to see another day. But then it's at the same time, it's like, man standing, man's ground. It's kind of like war in an area code that is so condensed, like Lewisham's that five minutes down the road from Queens Road. Brixton is a 10 minute drive. If you live in Campbell, it's around the corner. Like th we can see each other, but we're 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 repping this area, and we don't know why, but we just know that we don't like these but we don't like these men. So growing up like that, I feel like that's what gave me an understanding of the streets, and I feel like I'll never change that because I'm street smart to this day. And mm -hmm. I feel like, yeah, if I didn't go through that, I wouldn't be the man I am today, bro. Like some of the madnesses that man got away with, yeah, it's only God. I always say, bro, the amount of times man's house has been raided, or you get me close calls where something could have happened that was fatal on both sides. Being able to survive that, yeah, it gives you a, it gives you purpose. You start to think, why is it that? Is it? Am I gonna get nicked to mad thing or even going into college, bro? <laughs> like I went to Open College, bro, and if people know man in Open College, I was a problem there because I've just gone from, is this what you lot think you're bad? 
you ain't, you ain't lived a day in man's shoes, blood. Man's gonna, this is, you're getting, it was a problem over there and I had to get kicked out of there because it just got mad. Man's had a quick fuse. Like anything that felt like a violation, man's acting on it straight. And in hindsight, that's not ideal. And I've had my L's, don't get it twisted. I'm not saying man was some super gangster, but I would always stand on something that I felt like I'm here now, in it, deal with it. And I, I always felt like that was my downfall, but also a blessing because I'm like that now with my business. I'm, I'm like that now with my career. I won't stop. I've got a stubborn mentality where I feel like if I want something, I'm going to get it. And I feel like that, that confidence comes from a certain way you live in it. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah, school was a, was a, was a L. I got three GCSEs, Rebo. And when I left school, I got expelled for the last two weeks. So I only came in for exams. The teachers knew. And then the next year, the school turned into an academy. I say my year was- Yeah, academies when they get stricter. Yeah, that's so my son, it, So my son, so my kids go to academies. Yeah, so that, that academy um, feeling was like, damn, we really, <laughs> really fucked up that school. And the teachers would tell you like, we were good hearted kids with just bad morals. And, and, and that's sometimes what it is sometimes, you know, you just got, you just make the wrong decisions sometimes. We made them quite a lot. So they started to become way of life rather than bad decisions. So you met Tiny, what, year seven? Year seven, yeah. So his class was literally opposite, man, the form class. Um, and Boost was always one of those kids, yeah, that like, he just, he was street smart from Wade. Like from, from a, early, from, from early, <laughs> like, early dog. He was someone that just knew what it was. Mm -hmm. He had all the, 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 the songs and he just knew everything from early, so. Was he on his rapping from, uh, from young From young, well? yeah, he used to MC back in the day as well, but like rapping and stuff, when PYG first started. Yeah, cause you man started more rap, it was rap. Yeah, yeah. Grime was still kind of popping. Grime was happening, but we was more like You came in a rap. different, yeah, yeah like the Yankee I, boy. I, I feel like if it was now, mm -hmm. when we was doing our thing, we probably would have been one of the biggest groups in this thing because yeah. if you it's think like of, I say Coke's one of them as well. Yeah, massive, where, yeah. Coke was like a, a he's a, a a pioneer of that exactly. street sound mm -hmm. along with the Giggses and mm -hmm. the PDCs and all of them, man. They were like whatever, but they, the, the the eyes, I guess, on music wasn't on them. It was grime. Yeah. Or if he was making pop. Yeah. Pop grime, if you want to call it Pop R&B. Like pop R&B. Titch, that's why Titch went me. to the moon, innit? Exactly. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? So <clears throat> with us lot, yeah, like Boost was just a like, was just a proper rapper. And then we the form that, obviously PYG was was what it was. And man was just making bangers. Like some of the bangers that I listen to now, I'm just like, wow. Like if man really had, I don't know, like if we, if we had someone who was older than us that was like, go on, do it. Because when Giggs started- I was going to say, a, was Giggs not- So Giggs bought- Boost to SN1 because Boost was basically the best in the group along with Shots. So but SN1 and PYG are two different things. Yeah, SN1, that's like a- Is that the music? Older. That's music. So they was older, like SN1 and Giggs and what Giggs was doing with OTB and Buck and yes. that. They were already, I think they understood more. They were business savvy so in Bucks, terms of- So what's Buck's ends? Woolly Road. That's so Woolly Road is like, it's, it's, it's again, it's like connected, isn't it? Yeah. So I even had, I had cousins from Woolly Road as well. So when they started that, when Boost got part of SM1, we felt like, oh my God, Boost is gone now. He's he's gonna be, cause he was bro. Like he was, he was en route. I feel like the way Giggs' career has gone, Boost would have been there with him if he Snap didn't go to jail. Well. Snap's another one. But Snap's brazy. Bro, but, he was my so, favourite, I yeah, can't lie. He was Snap the one that is, was like, he was my favourite. Like, I, loved, I loved Styles P and that. Styles P was like my, that was my guy. And I think he was the closest thing to Styles P yes. in, in the UK. Mm -hmm. Like he had like, Bars, bars on bars. He'll make bars. you like. He'd make you go like. Ooh. Yeah, it's just. Ooh. Ooh. Like you get me like an SI and like, they were. They was like again m musically. They were incredible. Bro. Mm -hmm. It was a real good music, but we just didn't have the direction or the access to radio or you know what I'm trying to say. A man's dropping songs on MP3s. There's no mixtape. There's no PYG mixtape. There's no nothing of that because Bear Man went jail and the rappers that were part of it they all went jail. So it, it, it stopped. Music stopped. And obviously people after us have, have come through and done their own thing. But a lot of people that's my age in the 30s and, or even late 20s will know that era of music, man was dropping hits. And um, yeah, it's just that, you know, school, like we formed it secondary, after secondary school, college and that, that era, then it just all went to, it went to shit. And I feel like if certain man didn't go jail, who knows what, what, what they would have been doing right now. Do you get me? So that was the goal. It was the music. I think for the man then, was yeah. Was that a target for everyone? That's where what was like, this was doing. Where, like we can all come out of this But man was just making music because man loved it. Mm. And man could rap. Like I had never really made it. Did I you made, ever try to jump on it? No, I did. I, I could rap bro, but yeah. I just never, I didn't have the confidence for that. That wasn't my thing. You know, like certain man, like- Because you say a, drama. So it's just another form of- 
Yeah, it's, it's that, entertainment. It's just, yes, it's exactly. entertainment. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? Well, Boost was always going to be a rapper. That was always going to be his thing. Like, he's That uh, was his calling. That was his calling, bro. Like, back then, he was it, it was more gritty. Mm -hmm. And as he's got older, you can see, like, the levels have got better and better and better. I say to him, like, like I said, bro, you shout bare blood, but it's the passion that he had in the music. But now you, you're hearing it, it's, it's a more cultured sound. I think he's one of the most improved rappers that we've had, we've got in the scene right now. And him and him and Tef linking up is just perfect. It just makes sense. Um, Tef was also one of my favorite rappers growing up that I couldn't even say vocally because he's from Brixton. Bricky. You know what I'm trying to say? But he knows. I, I know all of these old but school Te songs. Tef was the one that could go to every hood, like. Yeah, because he had cousins. Because I always yeah, saw, yeah. like, Tef, Tef yeah. was here, Tef was there, yeah, Tef was here, Tef that video, that video. I'm like, bro, this well. is everywhere, blood. Like. Yeah, cousins in Peckham. But Tef was just always someone that man respected as an artist. And obviously, that's now my brother. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I feel like growing up with Boost, I always knew what he was going to do. Like, he was like a general when it came to, like, that side of things. He just knew he was very street smart from early, whereas a few of us, we was just learning the trade as we was going on. So with that being said, it was just uh, that moment in our lives. It felt like felt like two years, but it was literally 10 years of man being together. And then until we went jail, it just kind of, you know, flopped. But I remember when he first came out, Jay came to my car park and it was just like, he seen me. Do he, done, he done what, eight or something? I think it was 10. Was it 10? So I went, I went to, I was in college when I got the call that he's in jail. That was 20, 2007 or mm -hmm. 2008. Yeah, so Because weren't 10. it just after Lookout? Yeah, so it was It was literally at the prime yeah. of his, I say, surgeons to the top, mm -hmm. as in, in on the street level. And then when he came out, I think the reason why he's able to create a career for himself is because those that know, know that he was an integral part mm -hmm. of also what was building with SM1 and also with the, the sound that was coming from our ends. So that's why he's getting his flowers, so to speak now, top 40s and, mm -hmm. you know, tapes that are doing well and collabs with some of the best artists in the world. Um, not even in the world, but in our scene. I say the world because we are part of this world as well, innit? So it's beautiful to see, because I know my brother from from early to, to we're, bro, I've known him since I was, what, it's like 11? 20 years, blood. Tw I was gonna say 11, 10? Yeah, like 12, 11, yeah. 12. To now me being, so it's 20 years, bro, I've known Homeboy for. And amongst other people that are still around us, you know what I'm trying to say? We've got friends that we've known since Nokia's were still a thing, fam. Do you get me? So like I got a group chat, it's called Acre Boys. Mm. And we've all known each other from at least 10 years old. Yeah. So it's like 25 years, blood. And that's why with man, there's only, and there's eight of us in the chat, blood. Yeah, it's but it's like, like four, last, like last eight one's left, blood. Yeah, like, blood. And the thing is for man, that's why when I've, when I've um, entered this industry, I've lived a life before this. My life didn't start here. Mm -hmm. It has just developed into a more beautiful and more obtainable life mm -hmm. that I can now be proud of. Mm -hmm. I am not proud of anything that man's done before. I still don't speak on things because again, I'm, I'm in a different place right now. But at the same time, I would never change any of that stuff because I, I would have had nothing to learn from. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm trying to say? That, that style of living is what some people have to live. Once, yeah. The minute you, you you claim to be something and you- You have to adapt to your environment. It's man, like, I tell people, ASAP. you either you either eat, pause or be eaten. Yeah. There's no middle ground, bro. When you're in that environment, I've seen people get violated, bro. Yeah. Like get absolute, and I'm like, nah, that's-, that's was, For me, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got, you, I gotta do this. You like, got people that are genuinely gonna be, you know, better than you or whatever, but I just feel like you have to have something to stand on. Yeah. That's you gotta why, have something about you. That's why I was I, I I still go to my ends and I still feel at home there because yes. I'm a part of that. Yes. I'm a reason why there's, yes. there's certain things. I'm, I'm part of blood. You get me, bro? I'm still there, bro. Like, I'll tell you something, blood. Only the real ones can go back to their ends yeah. after getting it, like yeah, how because, we are now, blood. Man's part I, can't, of it, bro. I can tell I was you for doing free. My content. Holy Pat Man can't go back to I, my ends. I was ends. doing my content, yeah? Yeah. In the mm. ends. Most of my videos were done in Peckham. I was walking up and down Rye Lane, doing my videos and going back to my gaff, bro. So there was... I'm part of that DNA of Peckham, bro. And I, it will always be part of me. But at the same time, there's elevation. You want to go to a certain place. The places that I've gone to, I wouldn't have gone to if I didn't have the understanding of life and what, what is good and what is bad. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? And I've been able to see that and go to these heights that I've gone to. You don't go through... I always say, yeah, the stories of the people that have gone through stuff mean more than the people that have been hand-fed things. Mm -hmm. I didn't get a silver spoon or a gold spoon. Mm -hmm. My thing was brown, mm -hmm. crispy brown. I didn't even have a spoon. You get me? Yeah. Like this, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Man's taking what man can. <laughs> me. Whereas nowadays, like, I feel like man's duty now is to also tell these stories, but then also explain to man that this ain't the be or end all. Mm -hmm. You can't just stay in one way of living. Mm -hmm. 
Because even men that are on the roads and they're trapping, they want to get out. Talk the thing. They try and do business. They create businesses. They try and create something for them. Every that street use. nigga, their plan is to get off the road. You no, me, no real street man, no real bad man, whatever mm. you want to call it, wants to stay on the road forever. Everyone wants mm. to get their thing and spin. And if they can't, they, they try and do it in other ways, exactly. bro. You see a bad man on holiday, bro, because he wants to enjoy life. Mm -hmm. He wants to do whatever. Like you, It's part of what it is, isn't it? But I always knew that like I wanted more for myself. I wanted to be, I remember my brother used to say to me, he goes, bro, like, you know, when you see certain man that you know is a friend of a friend, he's on tour with this artist. I remember one of my brothers used to say, but when are we going to get one of ours that's going to be able to take man to these events and go to these places? Because, it's you. And it's man, you get me? But then it's like, now I go to events, I'll see Booster. I'll see, you get me, one my other bridge in there. So it's now becoming a thing where we're all in and around these places, isn't it? And it's like, it's beautiful to see that you see man from different ends linking up because we all know the same struggle. Like that's one thing that I love about where we're at now, isn't it? Because it just, it just seems like, yeah, we're all just, we've all come from the sandbox, but now we're in the sand properly, like feet in the sand, enjoying and enjoying the fruits of man's labor and hard work. All of these L's that we've taken are for a reason. That's why I say, I never say it's a loss. I always say it's a lesson, blood car. Everything I've learned is the reason why I move differently now. I'm very strategic and calculated with the things that I do and the things and places where I, what I say and so on and so forth. Were really calculated with the Qatar thing, was you? One nil to you. <laughs> one nil, lied, one nil. You lied it. No, yeah, one you, nil, you one nil. Yeah, like Qatar, you know, the Qatar yeah, thing, oh, that, just... was, that was, that was, go that was Go watch the video as well, blood. Go watch that yeah, video, yeah, blood. It was Make sure impulse. you go watch that, yeah, blood. Yeah, troops killed me, I can't lie, but <laughs> it was it was impulse. And I'm an impulsive person when it comes to my team, blood. I love that scene. I am as well, bro. bro come on, you man. You know how it goes, bro. When it comes to you, look at me. I'm dripped up. Yeah, like I played for the he team. He never got the memo. They get me, bro. I came in there repping my colours, blood. But you get me. But that's my, that's man's thing. I've always just... You get me. All the things that um, I, I love, I never stopped doing them. Yeah. I loved playing football. Still kept playing football. Always watched my team. Regardless of where I was in life, I've always wanted to watch my team. Always watched the, the, the films that I want to watch. I've always... You get me. I've always loved doing the things that I feel like make me happy. And I never will stop doing that. That's a big, big important thing for me. And that's why I say to the youths, always find what you love doing and go, go. If you love, like, bro, if you love painting, but you work in, in, in Selfridges, mm. don't stop painting. Mm -hmm. Don't stop. Cause you love that. That's the one thing that you Even know. Like, that no you can, you're, you're during your break. Bro, you hit, get hit, me. Boom, you call hour break. Look, hour break. 10 minute lunch, you get 10 you minute come food, home from work. Boom. After you finish doing your mm -hmm. work, we do your admin or whatever it may be. You go and you paint, bro. It's that place where you feel comfortable at peace. Got at peace bro and i feel like me when i go to work bro you saw how much today how we work bro i loved it man at halfway through i'm just like bro this episode's gonna bang then i'm also thinking ah this is sick you see me on the phone on the phone to my editors like do this do this let's get this done i love this i love this bro and i and i i'm so blessed that i have the opportunity to do this every day for work bro it's a mad thing so you said you got kicked out of college yeah is that when so when when did you decide to start the YouTube thing. Cause so when you got kicked, I got out, of kicked college, out of college when I was two, 19, 18. Mm. Cause you're yeah. still young them times. Cause of FIFA as well. Is it? Yeah, some guy was like, oh, he's next. I was like, I'm next. And I just smashed his head with the Xbox pad. Boy, boy. But I didn't mean- Xbox pad? Xbox pad. Jesus. Like, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. And I remember like, that, that's when I just felt like, I'm, I'm, this is too much now. I need to, I need to crack on with real life. Like, uh, you get me like, this ain't, this Is that ain't when it. you sat down like, and- so yeah, like, so then I, I, I basically, I, I basically said, no, nah, I'm not doing How did your no mum more. and dad feel? They hated it, bro. Because they're like, Come yo, on, you man, I'm a good, us. bro, I'm actually a good you that made the wrong decisions. That's what I'd say. So am I. Good you made the wrong yeah. decisions. And then you got to stand on those decisions. That's if the you, thing. If you go and bang someone in their face, you got to know that that person's coming back. Yeah, you. So repercussions. You repercussions, bro. That's that's life, innit? You do, get me, deal with them. Jamaican innit? saying, who don't hear must feel. I never heard, so I felt. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm saying that. <laughs> I, I, felt. Felt. I kept feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I kept feeling until I heard and I was like, all right. All right, send it on. All right. So, so, oh, no, so, 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 so I'm getting now, man. <laughs> all right, send it All right. On. So I, I, think I, I left college. So I stopped education fully about 23, 24 Went again, tried to do uni. I went London, met uni. And this is when I was like on my journey. So I, I, I've said this before, but I worked in Ellsbury prison as a mentor to help people that oh, had like three sick. years, three years left on their sentence. Shout out Project 507. And that was, that was to, um, and Ellsbury was on a, one of the toughest Ellsbury's jails. Ellsbury's a mad job. It was a mad job. You hear you going to Ellsbury, you're like, what are you I remember going on the, 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 the twos and the, the, the three. I remember saying to the, I remember seeing some of you, he goes, bro, you went to my school, innit? And he goes, well, you're going to help me get out of here? And I was just like, brother, I'm here to work, cuz. Like, you get me? And I remember meeting kids who were in jail for, for, for like, attempted mm. of jail for, like, weapons and stuff. And 
for me, I could see myself in them, even though I never went to jail, but I could see that I probably would have been here if, if I got caught or if anything happened or, you know what I'm saying to say? Wrong place, wrong time. So that's what the passion I had was like, what I've gone through, I don't, I don't want no one else. But you know, you can't be Captain Save the Streets, bro. It doesn't work. The system is, isn't set up for that. So I remember going in there and um, having those conversations, playing chess, learning how to play chess with these, these young youths, trying to just take their mind off whatever situation that they're in. And some of some, some stories that I saw and, and, and it was emotional, blood. Like I felt guilty, man. I can just get out and leave. I'm seeing man shout, you gonna be here next week, yeah? Like, I felt a connection to those people because those reminded me of my brethren. They reminded me of my, my my friends and so on and so forth. So being able to like be in that environment and see what it's like without being there. Obviously I visited Bear Man in jail, but to actually be there and walk around was a very eye-opening thing. I ended up losing the job because on my criminal record, DBS, you got signed a DBS and I had a criminal record at the time. So I forgot that I had it because it was at 18. I'm 24 now. So I'm thinking it's wiped out. So I've, write, I've written, no, I don't have it. And then DBS has come through again and they've gone, yeah, he has got a criminal record. So I ended up losing my job. And that's when I went into a spiral because I was like, oh, blood, I'm, like trying, to, trying, and I'm then... trying to do this thing, but it's just not working. Mm. And I went through a mad depression. I, was, I don't think I left my, my premises or like yard and places like friends' houses and t for like a year. I was watching like bare TV shows and... I remember my mum was just like to me, like, this ain't life, should come back from work with the Metro and cut out work thing for me to do. And there's something about the stigma of going to go and get a job just didn't stick right with me. It just didn't sit right with me. I was like, this is dead. So then um, I ended up like getting this job as a telly sales um, in Camden, but it was one of those like cold calling it's ones. It's a bit far. But I didn't want to work in my area. No, that's like me still. When I got yeah, my yeah. first job, but it was out to the end stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't, didn't want to see none. No one. I didn't see, see no, no one. one I, so know. I worked in Camden, yeah. made a McDonald's, um, worked there, and then because um, I couldn't do the job properly, I ended up losing the job, and it was a job that was paying you daily. So I'd get like a bills a day, and I thought to my mum, "Yeah, I'm gonna contribute." That left that job because because they sat to me, and I was just like, "Yeah, the work ain't for me. Am I gonna? Is this gonna be my life?" And I remember like when I was younger, my dad always say to me like. There's gonna come a time where I'm not here, you're gonna say my dad was right. And 10 times, 10 out of 10, he was right. Same was my mum. So I remember like when I when I ended up losing that job, I got to a place where I was just like, you know what, yeah? I got to, I got to sort something out here, innit? So- The um, next thing's got a hit. Yeah, so that's when I went to go and do uni. I wanted to be, I still wanted to do sociology and psychology. I wanted to understand how the, the human mind thinks and how we can adopt patterns of behavior and stuff. So ended up doing that. Um, for three months and it just didn't work. I just felt like, oh, I don't know, this ain't me. I thought I wanted to do it, but it wasn't me. So during that time, I dropped a video of me walking up and down Peckham. So uh, you must've seen this video. There's a, there's some feds there. And then there's this guy. So I'm gone, I've gone, <laughs> leave him alone, man. And they've gone, he's actually giving us information. I was going, what are you snitching? Yeah. Bruh, like that video went mad viral. viral. And I remember I think being I'm in- I just bait posted it. Yeah, my, I, think, I my swear Ads posted it. My black. guy, that's why he was Ads always- Ads is a bad boy, shout out Ads. I've got can, love for Ads. Nobody can Anyone chat, chat shit on Ads, I'm uh, there like, nah, nah baby yourself, bro. Nobody can chat shit about yeah. I'm just bait. Because Ads, he was yeah. the first man that posted me and yeah. acted me. Bro, he- this, I ain't gonna this lie, is he, what, when he posted me, I must've got about 40, maybe 30K followers off bro, his post, so bro. I'm not gonna lie, so big up What he taught me to do, yeah. Anyway, when he went, so I was in a uni lecture. Them times there, because I'm no one on social media, my notifications are up. So. I'm in a uni lecture. I'm just seeing my phone and it's going. It's just lag, yeah. lagging. When it first, it's mad, isn't it? When it first. I was like, <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? I was like, like, what's going on? I thought I got hacked. Yeah, I thought yeah, I got yeah, hacked, yeah. blood. I thought I got hacked. So then what happened was, um, gone on my Instagram, seen a caption. A lot of people are taking this video and repurposing it because it went mad. It was on Facebook, 10 million views. On all these platforms, no one's at me. So I've gone, I've seen him go, oh yeah. Um, for, Loads of people are using this uh, video, but the real person is this, Harry Pinero. I just messaged him. I was like, wow, thank you, bro. So what I'll do is I'll send him videos and he'll be like, mm, I don't think this one's going to work. Try something else, it. And for a young kid who's younger than me, the way he understood social media at a young age, yeah, when social media he's was just genius. starting, absolute genius. And he deserves all the, the credit and clout that he's got right now. So um, what he told me to do was whenever I post, and there was another guy called Mo Jammer, yeah, Mo Jammer. He taught me because a lot of my videos kept getting copied and not people not adding me. So he said, what you need to do is get a, maybe download this template, 
where I have half of the video and then half of it is a caption for clickbait. And then I'll put Harry Panero. So even if you try to repurpose it, you can't. Mm -hmm. So that's how I started getting my name around. But anyway, I'm just basically said, I'm gonna at you, put your Instagram on private so people have to follow you. That's how I got my following up so quickly. So it was, it was, it was his formula is what got me there. Then, um, then yeah, Mo Jamma told me what to do. Um, and then I started doing my stairs videos, which was me showcasing myself and showing my confidence and my love for they myself. They were hilarious, bro. Bro, that was the essence, bro. Yo, you get me? Like, like, we're man, shining. Yeah, that, that, was, that was before. That's, my nigga. that's before. <laughs> that's before I got on. That was I'm, uh, that, that was after I got on. Yeah. Sorry. Like beforehand, it was just me. Uh, bro, I remember my boy, he sent me a picture the other day. I was wearing some Calvin Klein uh, jacket, which I don't, I love Calvin Klein, by the way. And if you want to do an ad with me, I'm aware, mate. But <laughs> the jacket was horror. And he was like, bro, you was a brock you. But I was. But I had but we the were all bro, bro, we're from the hood. But I had the confidence of yeah. someone who was rich. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So I remember like jumping off um, the staircases and I don't know why I jumped off the staircases. That's just an element of my character, yeah. who I am as a person. It was person. hilarious, bud. Because you just, jumping off the, the cases, just see, whoop. <laughs> yeah, doing, doing, doing a rock elbow, yeah. like, people's elbow. Like that was just me being myself. And because nobody was doing that. Yeah, yeah, it was different. It was different. And that's what I guess catapulted me to like where, where I am to this day, innit? So... Yeah, I, remember, I love those because I was doing it day in, day out. I think of scenarios that had happened or I knew of. And the street man were fucking with it because they were like, bruv, he's just like me. Yeah, it's like one of the man them. He gets it. Yeah, yeah. So this is why I feel like the love that I've got in the hood is different because it's like, I'm doing videos for you, man. I ain't doing it for no, I'm not trying, trying to do it because I'm trying to be, I, and I don't even know how like people that weren't from our neck of the woods understood what my man was saying because you ain't lived that, but I guess that era, that 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 type of content is what people love, innit? Mm -hmm. So started doing that. Then Rashid. Link up. Link up. Northwest. I will never forget that guy ever. Even though like me and him don't work as much as we I would love to because he's an elite guy. Tighten her ass. But that's how we that's how he stick that's how he stays the way he is, innit? I say tighten her ass. He did offer me money, but I was like, I was at a place where I was like, I don't even I know I'm gonna get it elsewhere, innit? Like, that's just a personal joke that I have with him. But he offered me a role to do Talent Hunt and Arnold George, shout out to Arnold George, he was doing it beforehand where he was doing it during wireless. I didn't even watch three minutes of that video and I was like, I know what I need to do. So I did a uh, Shepherd's Bush. I did Peckham. Peckham was my best episode because it was in the hood. Man was cutting through the hood. Like I had a few men behind me, pause. Um, that was just obviously, cause it was getting peat. There's yeah. bare school kids and whatever. We did Brixton, another one of my best episodes. And even someone from Peckham doing something in Brixton like that. It's my, my confidence to just do it was just what I wanted to do in it. We did Croydon, Strawberries and Creams in Cambridge, 420. Um, all of those videos made me, like people realizing I can present. Now these things that I'm doing, I'm not doing them intentionally, you know? I'm just doing them because it just feels right. This is what I feel like I should do. So I did that, that went mad. My following boosted up again. Everyone was like, oh, I'll do a talent hunt. Did one in Stratford Westfield as well. That was like a Christmas edition. And I was, I'm just a tap to you anyway. So when I do things, I do them off impulse. I'm just like, fuck it, I'm doing this. Shout out to New Jay that was filming man as well. Cause he carried, he, he took man, he used the cameraman for like everything, innit? Um, and he would give me ideas. I would done one in LA. Um, so we did that. And then um, I met Chunks in Philly, innit? And now Chunks and Philly, they were- I was gonna say, so what, yeah, because that's- Yeah, so them man, so Chunks hit me up because one of his brethren, Liban, was like, yeah, this guy's next up. Like, he's mad funny. Chunks watched a few of my videos, DM'd me and was like, bro, you're mad funny. We're gonna be at Cambridge. I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be there as so I'm gonna be doing Talent Hump, link up. Philly hit me and was like, bro, you're amazing at what you do. Um, go and get your YouTube channel. Don't make the same mistakes I did. So already the love I could feel was genuine and it was like, loved what I was doing. And I was obviously a massive fan of Philly anyway. Chunks, I found out about a bit later and I was like, this guy's so tapped. Like, he's so funny. Like genuinely a hilarious human being, isn't it? So, did my talent hunt in Cambridge and then Chunks and Philly, literally, they just walked behind man, pause. And I'm only doing pause because of you, you know, I swear <laughs> that you just messed up my whole situation over here. But still, anyway, and then we got an organic capture the first time we ever uh, was with each other on camera. Then I got offered to do Does The Shoe Fit. Does the shoe fit, that's what. Because that opened Harry Panera up to a different audience. The younger generation, the college kids and so on, so on and so forth. So I just remember that era of just being like, wow, things are happening mad fast. 
And even before that, when I was working, I had a job that I was working in an office when I said to you, I was jumping off the staircases, Poet hit me and was like, no, someone sent me a, vi a, a screenshot that Poet has said, whoever this guy is, he's incredible. And I'm, bro, I've watched Poet since I was young. Poet's a, a, a proper- He's like, an OG in this. OG, him and Vuj, but mm -hmm. Poet, I was just like, if he's watching my content, I'm doing something right. And then um, he's the reason why I quit my job because he was telling me to come on Filthy Fellas. It's like, come, just come on an episode, like get me, we're building something here, which would already was already established. But I went on there once, then I was like, wow, the levels are high. You got man like Specs, Steve-O, you know, like bare man that are just seasoned in it. And I'm just like, whoa, I just felt like my first episode, horror show, horror show. I, I didn't know what I was talking about. I just thought I'm here. And even I like can see in the comments, people are like, oh, I'll get him off here, he's, he's not. But I started to build as I got, I got as I got on and then I ended up quitting my job. And that's when I took social media 100% as my career. First year, I didn't make one penny. Not one, not, not even a score. Mm -hmm. Didn't make one penny. But I knew that, that I believe that what I'm doing is new and it's, it's fresh and no one can do it the way I do it. So I knew it was going to happen. So that's why I quit my job, so shout out to Poet. But then obviously when I did Does the Street, I knew I was gone after that. I just that's knew. the first time thing, isn't it? Yeah, when I did that, I knew, I'm clear. My chick watches that. She didn't watch YouTube, but she watched that. Yeah, bro, everyone does, bro. The, the views, are, check the views, bro. Tens They're of mental. millions, tens They're of millions mental, of bro. views, bro. Like, because it they was, again, mental. you've got Chunks, who's his own character, myself. Philly. you got me, and then shout out Jack Fowler. Was I was going to say, episode. Jackie boy. Jack, Jack Fowler, he's fresh from Love Island. Mm -hmm. The Gallim Sugar. Mm. It's just all That's my dog. Yeah, come on, Jack's a stand-up <laughs> stand brother. Stand-up brother. <laughs> And then the next episode was when it was with Cones. And that for me yeah. was the epitome mm. of does the shoe fit. I don't think it's ever going to get to a level that's that higher ever. I'm sorry. Like you had all four of us in man's bag. And Cones, obviously man knows Cones from the roads anyway. So having him on there and seeing him do a different style of what we know him to be like, yeah, was elite. Because I'm getting onto him. He's getting onto man. So I'm getting onto Philly. He's get like, it's what we do it as friends. It just yeah. worked. It just worked perfectly. And then obviously the other stuff that I've done now is self-explanatory, innit? I've just done that. all my dreams that I've wanted to do. I've just come come true, innit? And it's just been mad beautiful. And I feel like man's just pioneers in this thing now. Like you're gonna look back in a few years and be like, right, those are the guys that changed it. And it's now allowing the other generations to come through and just be themselves. More importantly, do you. I always say it, don't try and be like anyone. I didn't try and be like Moda Comedian because Molder Comedian is himself. Mm. I didn't try and be like Michael Dapper because Michael Dapper is his own, his own self. They never try to be like no one. You can never say, oh, Harry, you're just like no one. I'm myself. That's why it works. And it's a testament to like where man's at right now, man's career and where I can go to. I've developed so much as a as a man, as a as an adult, and also just as, as someone's son and a, and a father blood. So those, 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 um, those like stages in my career and in my life, have all made sense from me being like a naughty kid to me being on the roads and me being like, even when I tell people I've been on the roads, they're like, oh, whatever. What are you the fuck caps about that shit? Bro, that's I'm what I'm, yeah, I, I get I just, that. Yeah. I just don't yeah. want, that's not something that man- Man ain't gonna put, like, bro, you yeah, think man's gonna that, say that, man was outside that's and man not where outside. I am right now yeah, in, in, in my life. And and at the same time, I'm not, a, I'm not uh, ashamed of it, but it's not where I'm at. We spoke on that, like we're not ashamed. And we wouldn't change anything, yeah. but we do have a few regrets in what we course, in what we course, did on blood, the road. Like, but for my parents, it doesn't blood. like it doesn't. I'm not gonna say like, oh, I, I, I wish that never happened. Bro, like, man used to go to yardy dances, shubs. That's part of the thing. Yeah, yeah. Vibes, you get me. Vibes and Movado. Oh. When vibes and vibes and Movado were going at each other, bro, the the the, the scene was and incredible. And the literal dance was half cartel, half Movado. Gaza Gully, Ruby. Yeah, bro. literally. Like, 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 when you? when are you? when Movado played, I'd be like this. Yeah, you must be dreaming. Yeah, I'd be like this. Like all of them things. And then you hit me. Baba boy, don't run. Yeah, I'm come there. on, man. Man, just dress like, up like police. I run like teeth. Don't like, run. Bro, you get me? Like that's yeah, man. that's what I feel like. I wouldn't be in those places mm. if I wasn't a certain way. And I feel like you just had to be there. Man's leaving yardy dances at like five, five six in the morning. It's bright as day. Yeah. My mum's just about about to, beat. about to leave mm. to go to work. She's like, you ain't been home. Like that like NASA. You get me? So <laughs> so for me, I think that's why I love my 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 journey and it's just a, a beautiful journey. And I feel like when I'm able to like write it down or put it in words for people to read and understand, then people will understand a bit more about, you know, and I'm not the only one. There's a lot of us that you see it day in, day out, bro. Like when I look at people like Gigs and Buck, what they've been able to create for themselves, 
they've been through this stuff. Testament of when I see gigs in America now, I'm just like, yes. But this is he should have been there years ago, years but he ago, couldn't. But the band. But this is the thing though. When it's your time, it's your yeah, time. Timing is everything. Yeah, bro, like, he's I tell shouted people out that, by, by Jay Z. You see me? Diddy. Un unprovoked. I got songs with Diddy, bro. It, the, could, you have, could, could you have seen that 10 never, years ago? Never, bro. But the thing is, though, he got brought out to... He was supposed to do Lil Wayne. When Lil yep. Wayne came out here yep. and he got and banned. And then Fed's lock it. So, Coke's another one. Beer times he's supposed yeah. to pull up for people. Lock it. Happen. When he got signed to Rock, the Feds were fucking it. So the Rock had to cut ties. So, yeah. So it's a, it's been a lovely journey. I can't even lie, man. And now you're at fatherhood. Mm. Welcome to my world. I'm in, I'm in there. Good luck. Yeah, no, no. It's, t it's, it's tough. Your, yeah, now your hairline might go soft. No, no, now if you clocked it, if you, if you zoom in a little bit, <laughs> it used to be an M, but now it's a U. Yeah, see, it's like, a it's U, it's an um. It's an um. But so what, little man's good? Ah, oh, bro, man. How's his behavior? He's good, man. Is I he? think I think he's got an incredible character. Very cheeky. Stems from Gets his pops. from his dad. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Very cheeky, but he's a lovely boy. His mum's doing an incredible job as well. Like we've we've done really well in terms of how we've raised our son. Mm -hmm. And how, we, and how we want him to be as well. Do you know what I'm saying? I feel like, um, obviously, it, it, we had him during lockdown, so it was very difficult f for us to, like, get the support, I guess, that everyone else gets. But we've done an incredible job. Our families have done really well to, like, make sure he feel, got what, he, what kids deserve, which is love and family. That boy can't ask for nothing he won't get. Like, I'll do anything for that boy. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So... Even down to like breakfast, sometimes I look at it, I just think, you lucky boy. Yeah, yeah. You got strawberries, raspberries in You're one bowl. you life. You got a little porridge over there. You got a little sausage and salmon over there. Chicken, of course, halal mm. way. Like I'm thinking, man was eating porridge, rude yeah. boy. And, and one little cocoa pops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some beans and some scrambled eggs. That Trust was, me. You get me, but that's what you want. I think like when you get you to a You want better for your kids. You want better. Like my dad wanted better for me. I also want better for my son. My son, inshallah, will want better for his son and so on and so forth or daughter or whatever you, whatever God blesses you with. So yeah, it's lovely, man. Like the sleepless nights, I'm used to them now. I'm used to waking up when I want and then it's like on, on his, on his. Yeah, he's the, he, he, he's the, he's the alarm. Time. But I wanted to, I, he started riding his bike now. Oh, wicked. You know what I'm trying to say? Like he loves going to play group. When I was in nursery, they always say to him, he's such a caring kid. Like, you know what I'm saying? But it's, it's just like, it's, it happened so quickly from them being like little babies to them now being Dark, walking mine's around. 10. Yeah, and come on now. Seven. See? Well, Carter's eight this month. Yeah. And Trey's 10. See? And I, I remember them being born. Like, I remember mm. holding Trey for the first time. I remember holding Carter. Mm. Like, I remember, I can see them like crawling on the floor. Mm. Like, can't even speak. Can't now wipe their back teeth. Yeah, now, now he's chatting off. Now like, he's, run, he's running his mouth with me, blood. Having a full on like, conversation. Points, daddy. Daddy there. This, this. Oh yeah, that. Yeah, he knows what he wants in life. And I feel like he's a very independent kid as well. Um, and he's getting better as, as as he gets older as well to understand what life's about. He loves getting on a bus, but I'm like, you don't get on a bus with your dad, bro. You got to do that with your granddad or your or whoever, not me. <laughs> it's not happening, blood. So, but you know, them little things there, man, it's just, it's taught me about, now, now I'm like so much more calmer and I just want to be the best dad that I can be. You know what I'm you trying to say? You want more kids? Of course, of course, as time goes on. Maybe not, not right done. now, because right now I'm just like- I You're happy like with the one. I'm happy with, no, it's not even just that. Of course I'd love to have other kids, but I'm no, saying- no, Right now you're just- Right now I'm cool with little man. Yeah. He's, he's enough for me right now. And also it's more about like, uh, you know, being so busy right now to have two kids. I feel like the second kid, if I was to have one right now, wouldn't get the same amount of attention because I had my son during lockdown. Mm -hmm. And where I am in my career right now, I really just want to, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm at that place. So let me just smash it as much as I can. And, you know, if God blesses me with a child on the way, then that's how it goes, isn't it? But for now, I would, I would say, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm chilling for now. So what's, in, what's what's next on the agenda? Um, For me, yeah, like I said, you know already, you've been in this space longer than I have in terms of the football space. I really love football, bro. And I really feel like I'm at a place right now where I can do what I want. And football is a massive part of my life. It's been that for a long time. So we've got the football podcast, which you was on today in Inside Scoop. Um, and also I want to create a place of platforms for people that didn't have or don't have, I won't say the source that man's got because mm. that sounds very like conceited, but more a thing of like The confidence. And, yeah, and the opportunities. I want to build that for some people because there's a lot of um, opportunities that don't get given to the right people who probably don't have the following and they don't know, they don't have the management or could get finessed because you obviously you're no one right now. So you're going to be getting peanuts. And we all get finessed. Yeah, we've, everyone. I got finessed. Been finessed. Like one of the biggest companies that you lot. Have <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. You get you get finessed, but you learn, and that's mm -hmm. all. Like it's our duty to make sure that we give 
for advice and 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 opportunities to people that you know give them their flowers while they're here innit? Mm -hmm. I, i've worked with like a lot of up-and-coming talent well not even up and coming but they're, they're younger than man like and i always so make sure that when i'm filming with them i make people know that this is the guy or this is the girl who's smashing it and i feel like i whenever i work with someone i really like to uplift them as much as i can but i want to do that behind the scenes as well so it's not just me that everyone's booking even though i love getting booked because i still love doing my job but that's a big part of what i want to do the merch it's not even merch anymore it's clothing we are winning. Yeah, that's we are a, winning. That's a mindset. That's a, a way of life. I feel like if we're all focused on winning, the hate gets eradicated from this whole thing, this whole thing. And I feel like that's what an issue that I feel like we have in this in our culture is that, you know what I'm saying? People hate what they can't achieve. And instead of learning how to become like this in your own way, you just point the finger. And someone like myself, I'm too thick skinned for this stuff, bro. Not much. That's what I'm saying, like, because these like Matsko man's off the rows, G. So Man's built different, bro. Yeah, like your like, little like when these men are on Twitter getting likes off their tweets because you're yeah. you, like you're trying to like cook man, as they say, you got cooked on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Bro, believe me, I'm at my yard, either mashing up my gal in the bedroom, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mashing up the pum pum, or I'm budding a spliff, bro. Yeah, like yeah? Or, or I'm training with Trey in, in the park, blood. It yeah. does not affect man, bro. Yeah, yeah. And I like, think I, I'm very strong, like I'm not like the man that Oh, I'm getting trolled. Oh, mm. oh, this and that, and start calling out for certain things. And oh, mm. this and nah, bro, man, a man, mm. man can. I'm strong enough to deal with it, bro. Sticks and stones is a real saying, bro. No, hundred percent. It's a real bro. saying, bro. Like, and that's why I, I, I echo that because I'm like, I don't care too much. I don't care at all to be don't honest. Give, I don't give a shit, fam. What, what people got to say, and I feel like that's something that has to be taught. And I think, unfortunately, for a lot of these young kids, they're in a generation where it's soft. Social media actually is everything. Whereas when I was growing up, there wasn't. Life was everything. You got to go outside. You got to be outside. Everything's happening outside. You were saying earlier, these men don't know about Knock Down Ginger. Bro, Knock Down Ginger. They don't know about... You lot Run outs. It, you lot called it Headers and Volleys, man. In man's end, we call it 66. Yeah, we call it Headers and Volleys. Yeah, like... We like, had 60 seconds. Yeah, 60 seconds, but we call it 66. But so 60 like, seconds was like, you play against each other. Yeah. And you got 60 seconds to score a goal. Yeah, so like all of that stuff, yeah, I feel like even though we're a bit older than most of these kids, these young, the younger generation, yeah, it is part of that growth of like knowing life is there to be lived, mm -hmm. not to be tweeted about, not to be posted on Instagram. And I feel like that's why I feel like I've had a different way of life in comparison to other people. Because when they cook me online, it's enough to make someone say, I don't want to do this no more. But my purpose is I've always felt like, bro, I'm going to do this regardless. Yeah, bro, yeah, it's not like, like, If you lot want to, if everyone wants to ostracize me, that's cool. I've got my core people that love me. And I always say this, I watched this thing that Travis did, Travis Scott, he said that when he was performing once, yeah, there was a crowd of like 10 people and he just performed like a madman to these people. That's how I look at life. Go where you're loved. And, and when you go wherever you're loved, you show them, you give them your all because that person will go and tell that person. That person will stay with you. And if, you, if you're getting just 10 cells, that 10 cells is organic and they want to watch you and they want to listen to you. And they want to, whatever it is. And I feel like that's my, that's been my, my thing in it. I couldn't care less if no one don't like me. That's, that's on you. It's not going to stop me. And I've, I always say, bro, I've prayed for this if god wants to remove this from my life then so be it that's what he wants for me but until then i have gotta keep going and um so, so just to confirm what you was about to, to to conclude what you're saying it's about the future about getting doing more big things you know working with my club more you know talking about the things i love more acting you see what me and philly are doing like man's just on enjoyment and happiness bro i just i feel like i'm in a great place right now and i want to continue staying in that place i've taken away all of unnecessary things in my life that i feel like was causing me problems you know and i just feel like yeah man's just on a good place now man just want to just keep winning but that's why i say we are winning bro not i'm winning we are you get it and it's just a mentality blood that's how we're gonna end it that is a perfect ending blood you understand you already know this I'm not even being biased, blood. Mm. Yeah, poet's in trouble. <laughs> this might be. Yeah, poet's my, my guy though. So poet's, poet's family though. That's yeah, all. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. Poet's yeah, family, poet's bro. Blood, you know like, what I mean? I, I, I enjoyed that, but I really enjoyed this, bro. No, nah, I appreciate you, appreciate you, me you on, rolling man. on, blood. Nah, come on, man. You when you gave me that message, I didn't even ask the question. I just said. You just said where and day. when. You literally I'm said there. where and when. You get me? There's a few people that you actually because I watch your stuff as well, and 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 not just because I'm I'm here, bro. You're a testament of, of a brother that's come from the end and hasn't changed the way they are, but has at the same time to develop something that's massive, bro. Like watching you break down is what got me happy. I loved it. <laughs> I loved seeing you at your worst when you're angry and passionate because you're like most fans. 
and you're very vocal about it. So to be able to even go to New York and have that, that just shows how how great you've been at what you do and you've just been troops. There's only one troops, bro. Like little things like a Bamiyang, like a blood clot. You got the man them singing, saying that. That's, um, <laughs> and I don't even support Arsenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So those those elements of, and this is what I'm saying, man, just got to keep this thing. This is the only way we can actually build this up to some mad stay thing. Stay together. Is if we stay together, bro. All that ego's got to go outside the door. Trust me. So yeah, appreciate you, blood. You're Let legend, them know bro. where to find you, fam. Man, you know where to find me, man. Harry Pinero on all socials, but also- YouTube uh, channel. Yeah, Harry Pinero. So I'm, I'm Harry Pinero on every social. Okay, so- Yeah, yeah, but also the inside scoot with me and Culture Cam. Shout out to Culture Cams. He wasn't there today because of his, his birthday. So yeah, man. Shout out to everyone that's supporting the thing. And yeah, man, start supporting these content creators that are coming up as well, blood. They need the support. Get me? We got the support, but we're trying to give it out to others as well. So you already know. We got HP every time, blood. You, you know, know. So we're going to cut family. Up, you already you know. Me? You know the vibe. Easy. You don't know the vibe. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Big week coming up, blood. We got Chelsea. You understand? Look out for. Inshallah, you lose. Inshallah, we win. <laughs> Three big videos coming out, blood. Look out for them. And then, mm. yeah, Saturday. You lot pray for me, blood, because if we lose to Chelsea, yeah, someone, someone's head tops flying yeah, off. <laughs> like, share, comment, subscribe. Uh, it's your boy Troops. I'm on. out, blood.